Hello and welcome to the next episode uh, of the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. In the Explain series, we take a sexual health topic and explain it. And this week is the turn of erectile dysfunction in the, un in the under 35s. Now, you, now, if you're thinking, well, hang on a minute, I'm over 35, but I've got an erectile dysfunction problem. Uh, should I be watching this video? The answer is yes, you should. Um, we're uh, the reason why we, uh, or I'm categorising this particular video for the under 35s is because um, uh, during the video I do talk quite a bit about pornography and the effect that has uh, on men under the age of 35 <laughs> because um, internet usage uh, in the older generations is completely different to the inter internet usage uh, in the under 35s and uh, as such what I see in clinic is completely different presentations of erectile or the causes of erectile dysfunction. So please keep on watching. So what is erectile dysfunction? Well medically speaking it's a, it's a type of sexual dysfunction characterised by the inability to develop or maintain an erection uh, of the penis uh, during sexual activity. Now in short that means you can't get a hard on when you want to. Um, now, uh, for the older generation, uh, we may be getting uh, a bit, uh, I say we, we may be getting a bit more used to uh, not uh, rising to the occasion uh, on demand as quickly as we wanted to. Um, but for the younger generation, uh, this rising to demand uh, has diminished uh, much, much quicker than they would actually expect. So uh, why, what are the reasons for not being able to uh, get a hard on? Um, well, the important thing is you need to rule out certain things. So uh, do you have diabetes? If you're concerned about getting diabetes uh, or, or you think you've got diabetes, then you also need to go and see your family doctor uh, or your GP uh, to get a, a diabetic screen. Uh, and that's those individuals that are drinking lots of water, they're peeing lots, they've got a, a thirst that is unquenchable. In other words, you're drinking all the time to try and uh, uh, quench your thirst. Uh, and uh, other things as well, for example, uh, losing uh, weight, uh, even though you're eating quite a lot. Uh, so if, if you've got any concerns about diabetes, uh, get yourself checked out by your doctor. Also, if you've got any uh, cardiovascular disease. Now, if you're under 35, the chances are you probably don't have uh, any form of cardiovascular disease. But if you're concerned, um, speak, again, speak to your family doctor. Um, or if you smoke a lot. And so if you smoke like a chimney and you've got a little bit of diabetes, you may well have a bit of cardiovascular disease. And the first signs of cardiovascular disease, especially in the older generation, is erectile dysfunction. And in fact, if you're a man in your 50s or 60s or uh, later and uh, you're having trouble getting uh, erections, uh, and it doesn't matter if they're particularly hard erections, but you're noticing that you're not getting erections at all. It could be a sign that arteries elsewhere in the body, like the heart or the neck, are getting furred up. And so they may very well need to be investigated. And I would strongly advise that you go and see your family doctor and let him know uh, that you're having uh, erectile dysfunction problems. Uh, saying all that, that if you do smoke, you must obviously stop. And that's the best way to protect um, uh, your erection health, as it were, uh, for the future and be able to look forward to um, uh, a longer uh, sex life. If you've got diabetes, you need to get your diabetes under control. Um, the important thing is, is what kind of medications are you also taking as well? So there's, uh, if you're on a long list of different types of medications, they can also cause problems in terms of erectile dysfunctions. The most common ones are, for example, um, antidepressants um, or nicotine, again, smoking or even uh, nicotine replacement therapy. Uh, either way, these things need to be uh, reduced if you can. Now, if you can't live without um, antidepressants, um, probably the wrong choice of phrasing, um, there are options for the antidepressants. So you can go on different types of antidepressants that don't uh, cause erectile dysfunction or decreased libido. Uh, also, is it something uh, physical like um, Pyronie's disease? And this is where you have fibrous plaques in the penis and the penis can then actually bend in a particular direction. If you're getting that, obviously getting an erection may actually be very, very painful. In that respect, then you also need to go and see a urologist to get that, try and sort it out. 
And so if you are getting erections, but they're very, very painful, uh, which making the erections, or you don't want an erection because it's painful, uh, you have to figure out why is it painful? <laughs> is it um, you can't pull back the foreskin easily enough, or there's a tight band of tissue that's stopping the foreskin from coming back on the penis? Um, this is uh, very, very painful and um, uh, for, unfortunately forgotten uh, the name of it, so this bit will be uh, edited out. Um, uh, and this is called, and if you've got a fibrous band on the tissue, this is called a phimosis, um, then th this will probably lead to you uh, needing um, a circumcision. Now, a circumcision isn't something to take lightly, so a lot of men actually love their foreskin, um, but if it's stopping you from having a, a sex life, it's stopping you from retracting the foreskin comfortably and is stopping your sex life, you're going to probably be quite miserable and even a little bit depressed about it. But if you, uh, And so one way of getting uh, through this is through a circumcision, um, uh, but a circumcision, after you've taken the foreskin off, does come with its own complications. Obviously, uh, it can lead to a bit of infection. Sometimes the foreskin can be stitched a little bit too tight, which can itself can be a little bit painful, so it might have to be redone. Um, but if you do have a bit of um, uh, phimosis, in other words, tightening of the foreskin, sometimes your GP can actually uh, give you some high dose steroids, especially if, if the tightening of the foreskin is, uh, has come along only in the last few months, and that can help relax the fibrous tissue. But if you stop the steroids, occasionally, uh, sorry, more commonly, that fibrosis can reoccur. And so you have to, when you step down from the steroids, uh, if you, uh, you don't just stop, you have to step down on a very gentle basis. So if you're using it twice a day, then you go once a day, once every two days, once every three days, uh, once it's all nice and loose. And that will hopefully reduce the chances of it coming back again. If it does come back again, uh, you can either go back on the steroid cream or you're probably looking for um, the circumcision again. So there's lots of uh, physical and medical causes for erectile dysfunction. <clears throat> Another reason as well is aging. And aging is, um, I don't necessarily mean comparing a 16 year old guy to a 90 year old guy. Obviously uh, there's gonna be a distinct um, aging process there. A 90 year old man is not gonna have uh, as strong uh, or powerful erections as a 16 year old guy. What I mean, whether I'm talking about aging is going from an adolescent into a man. And I get a lot of 21, 22 year olds coming in saying they're having trouble um, getting erections or they're having trouble um, uh, climaxing after they've climaxed once or twice already. <clears throat> and this is quite normal. As an adolescent, it's very, very simple and quick to get erection, come, erection, come, erection, come, okay? But unfortunately, when you get into manhood, uh, that ability to do that uh, reduces quite, uh, uh, quite markedly. Uh, and so it takes uh, longer to recuperate, and the older you get, the longer the recuperation time. So uh, don't be upset uh, if you're only um, uh, able to complete sex once, and then there's quite a long recuperation period of about um, uh, an hour or so. Uh, this is uh, quite normal. Another thing that people get quite worked up about is, again, when they're an adolescent, um, or should I say under 20, uh, they could have penetrative sex for a good half an hour or an hour and not come. But now they're becoming older, uh, they can only um, have sex for, uh, you know, people come to me and complain that they're only having sexual intercourse for 10 minutes before they ejaculate. Well, um, that's actually uh, quite good <laughs> um, because the average time to completion of ejaculation is you know, a few minutes, anywhere between uh, two to six minutes is uh, completely normal. And so uh, again, don't beat yourself up for it. It's completely normal. Um, other individuals come to me and complain, well, hang on a minute, I'm, I'm, I've, I've done all that, um, but why? And my, uh, I'm having trouble maintaining my erection. I can get an erection, but I can't maintain it. Um, so this is, again, comes under erectile dysfunction. 
And the question I always ask is, well, <clears throat> are you using pornography? And if so, how often? Um, if you are using a lot of pornography, and I would say a lot of pornography is anything more than once a week, um, then you need to seriously cut down on your pornogra pornography intake. Um, because the pornography you watch will affect uh, the sex life you have and it will also affect your mood uh, and can also lead to some forms of depression as well. Now, the reason why it does this is something called uh, the Coolidge effect, which is C-O-O-L-I-R-I-D-G-E effect, okay? Uh, the Coolidge effect. Um, and I'll give you an example of this, and that is uh, if you put a male sheep, which is called a ram, into a field, and you put him in with a single female sheep, which is called a ewe, uh, the male sheep will obviously have sex with the ewe and uh, it's time uh, to ejaculate it will be very quick to start with. But as the days and weeks go on, uh, the time from starting to have sex to ejaculation gets slightly longer and longer and longer. Okay? The reason for that is, is uh, the stimulus for reaching ejaculation is starting to subside. And we see this Coolidge effect is very, very common um, in long-term relationships where sex gets maybe a little bit boring and, they, and people need to feel free to spice it up uh, when the man doesn't come or it takes longer for him to ejaculate um, uh, as time goes on. So going back to the Coolidge effect, if you now put uh, the male ram in a sheep, sorry, in a, uh, a pen with many different types of uh, 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 female sheep, uh, he would have sex with all of them at various times and it doesn't matter how many weeks or months go by, his time to ejaculating from starting of sex uh, doesn't actually lengthen, okay, because he's getting his uh, interest, as it were, uh, always renewed. So when you watch pornography, uh, usually uh, people are clicking onto their ideal sexual situation, uh, the thing that really floats their boat. Um, now, in life, uh, before the internet, you would be lucky to ever uh, come to that ideal situation, and you will more commonly uh, see a, a normal-looking uh, uh, individual uh, and uh, have sex and all would be well. But in the pornography world, uh, you can in one hour see 500 uh, gorgeous, unbelievably fantastic human beings which you would probably never see in your hometown or home city in a thousand years. Uh, but you're getting that in a very, very short space of time. And unfortunately, uh, the pornography is not normal. Uh, but if you watch too much pornography, that is what your sexually acquired tastes become because you get uh, your your mind is rewired to think that is normal and only that is going to please you and so uh, the average uh, partner on uh, which you're attracted to doesn't stand a chance because they're not going to be able to compete with that level of um, uh, either uh, beauty or if it if needed sexual kink uh, and so that is why pornography can be so damaging and, uh, and people who watch pornography too much, this rewiring of the brain can be very, very upsetting um, because, uh, because you're not getting satisfied in the real world, um, this leads to unhappiness and happiness eventually will lead to some form of uh, depression. And so if you are depressed and you're watching lots of pornography, the first thing you do is you cut out the pornography. So if you're still getting erectile dysfunction, you're in good health, you've cut out the pornography, you're not on any medication, uh, you've gone back to the gym or you're keeping fit, you're doing lots of exercise, well, what else is there? Well, uh, the, the, another main subject is masturbation. And, uh, and it does actually matter how you masturbate. 
Uh, if you are masturbating and you're holding your penis very, very tight, and yes, I do go through this uh, uh, with people in clinic, and you can see my finger there is normal. If you're gripping your penis too tight, as you can see, I'm restricting the blood, um, but uh, there's no vagina in the world that can clamp a penis like this, and there's not many uh, um, uh, uh, anuses that can do that either, uh, and so you're not necessarily going to get the stimulation. And so what you must do is you must stop using what's called the death grip, and you may and you have to relax your grip, uh, enjoy it, okay? Uh, keep it nice to relax, nice and loose, and allow what's what we I say is more natural stimulation. And also, a lot of men who do a lot of anal sex, uh, if they um, uh, and so this is a bit of a difficult one between uh, for bisexual men or uh, straight guys that do lots of anal sex and then uh, want to complete in the vagina. Uh, unfortunately, the anal sphincter is a lot, lot tighter than the vagina muscles. And so you may have to cut down on uh, your anal sex while your uh, body gets used to uh, vaginal sex. That's also another area that can be quite uh, difficult. And the last thing uh, about erectile dysfunction is pressure to perform. So what do you regard as sex? Think it now, what is sex? Have you got that in your mind? Now, if you said, well, sex is sexual intercourse, uh, then uh, you would probably be wrong. That's not the answer I'm looking for. Sex is an enjoyable experience with your partner. It doesn't include, it doesn't have to include uh, penetration, it can, in, uh, in terms of vaginal or anal, it can include oral sex, it can include mutual masturbation, it, uh, but it's just a matter of having fun. If sex to you is only sexual intercourse and nothing more than sexual intercourse, then you really have to look about why or how you're identifying with sex itself. Um, because if you're putting that much pressure onto yourself, uh, then you are really going to disappoint and upset your partner. Not because you won't, you won't be able to have sexual intercourse. Uh, your partner will probably be thinking, what's wrong with me? Because he's uh, not getting a hard on in front of me. And obviously you don't want your, uh, your partner thinking that of you. Uh, so the whole idea of uh, sex is it is a, a mutual thing. It is a collaborative thing you do to someone you love. And it's a, a joint thing, okay? And you can only do that if you talk to one another. Uh, but don't ha expect that it always has to be uh, penetration, okay? Uh, and so if you take that pressure off your shoulders and you just say, we're going to bed, we're going to have a bit of a cuddle and a kiss and see what happens and just take it from there. Uh, and just have fun. Take the pressure off yourself. There's no pressure to perform. Um, and there's also other ways of stimulating your partner. Okay, you can use your hand, you can use your mouth, etc. etc. I hope you found this helpful. If, however, you've been through this video, and I know it's quite a long one, I'm sorry, but it is uh, quite a difficult subject, um, you can speak to your family doctor, but some family doctors are not very understanding about uh, sexual health. You can speak to your sexual health doctor. Um, you also uh, don't be frightened of doing uh, couples counselling, uh, but you also may need to speak to a psychosexual therapist as well. And... Um, <clears throat> One thing to, uh, to realise, which I forgot to say uh, earlier on, is uh, are you getting uh, erections in the morning? And so are you waking up in the middle of the night with a hard-on or are you waking up in the morning with a hard-on? That's called morning glory. It doesn't have to be every morning, uh, but if you are getting them normally, uh, that's called uh, normal um, physiological erections, which means everything is working as expected to do. And so therefore, chances are you're probably healthy, um, but you'll then have to think about, am I using too much pornography? Am I masturbating too much? And if you are masturbating too much, just cut it down to once a week or stop. Um, uh, are you using the wrong grip when you do masturbate? And are you putting too much pressure on yourself to perform? Okay, and so that's also another important thing to think about. So uh, if you've covered all that and you need further help, then you may need to speak to a psychosexual therapist um, as well as a, a sexual health doctor as well. Uh, always remember to go for a health screen if needed, as well as a sexual health screen. Uh, so you can get further information uh, from the British Association of Sexual Health, 
um, and also from the Family and Planning Association as well. And uh, if you like this episode, please like, uh, subscribe and share. And uh, I hope you have uh, good sexual health. Take care.